Hey, I'm Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. Thanks for joining us today. We're here to talk about drywall measuring, cutting, and installation techniques. A bunch of tips and tricks that'll help you to do this job a lot easier. And if you're joining us from the last video, we talked about all things drywall, about prepping and getting organized. Now it's basically step two, right? We're gonna move on with installing this stuff. So bear with this, because we're gonna start off with the most important decision you're gonna make in your drywall installation, and that is where to start. Generally speaking, when you're dealing with drywall, you want to start with the ceilings. But I want you to listen to what I got to say here because you want to resist the temptation to just start against the outside wall. And here's why. If you've been a fan of this channel at all and you've heard me say this before, you'll never find a room that's square. Now drywall is square. So here's your room. Let's just say we're putting in a nice square room and there's no problems with it. And you assume it's square. That means when you put your drywall against that edge on the ceiling, it'll be nice and perfect all the way across, no gaps, right? But in reality, your room is probably more like this. And then when you put your drywall against the wall and you've measured from this point to this point and it says 11 feet, you cut your drywall square and what you get is this. You get a piece of drywall that goes like this. Now, if you turn that drywall to fit, now your drywall doesn't fit the hole. It's long on one side, big gap on the other side, causes your world to hurt. You're up there on a ladder with your buddy going, oh, it doesn't fit. Somebody tries to do something stupid and jam it in there. You break your drywall and now you got a huge gap. Save yourself all that aggravation. What I want you to do is just start by measuring over 45 or 46 inches. Okay, take that measurement and write it on the wall. We'll call it 11 feet move over four feet, take that measurement, okay? And then what you're gonna have is because you're using the short side of the wall, if it's still 11 feet here to here, you're installing it square. Now, the distance here might be 44 on one side and 45 on the other side, but you can cut that because your sheet's 48 inches wide. So all you do is just start your line just a few inches shy of the width of a drywall and measure both lines and install that sheet first and then put that into fill. So the rest of this whole room will go in nice and square. And generally speaking, one of these walls will be square. And you can take your square and a level and you can throw it across your framing and you can double check in a corner to see how it's doing. Find the one corner that's the most square and work off of that one, okay? But to make your life simple, because it's really hard to measure a perfect piece of drywall the first time, just start 44 inches in and then off you go. What we're gonna do, Matt, if you could just do that. So when you're communicating with somebody else in the room, and let's say there's two of you working, you've got a friend helping to hang your drywall, what you wanna do is establish, you know, which wall is your, your, your level wall, okay? So we have a beam that's supporting the open space in this house. So this is our beam, all right? So when I'm asking for a measurement, I'm asking first from the beam out, and then from the beam out, right? And I'm gonna say, uh, this wall here has a door and this one has a window so we can communicate right so when I'm making my drywall here I'm gonna be taking this sheet putting it over and lifting it up so I can write door side and I know when he's giving me a measurement that this door side this is gonna be the square side that's gonna be the cut end because we're gonna pick it up and go like this and install it this way okay I don't know if that made a lot of sense, but let's try that one more time. The door is over here. So we're gonna pick the sheet up, rotate it, just like in the picture, and lift it up. So my, my door symbol would be on that part of the drywall. So when I'm installing this, the other end here ends up down here on the square wall, we're not cutting. We're gonna cut the other side in case these dimensions are different. So, so we're gonna just measure this together. Now we're measuring based on this floor joist because this floor joist is 45 inches in the room, which is a perfect location. Okay, Matt, mm. right to the stud. What's my actual measurement? Uh, 134 and like 7 eighths or something like that. 134 and 7 eighths. Okay, so what I'm gonna write is 134, 7 eighths. Okay, now we wanna move over. One, two, three more studs. Now these joists are actually, three studs, they're joists. These joists are 16 inches apart. So if you just count three more, it's actually four feet. It's a great cheat. It's 
It's one of the reasons why I love having things strapped because it makes math so much easier. Uh, 135 and a quarter. There we go. All right, that's a huge difference. The other side down here, it's 135 and a quarter. Important to write these down. Now, you want to do a little math because the last thing you want to do is cut this drywall exactly the right dimension. So if this represents the whole dimension, the wall, ceiling, and the wall, you want your drywall to actually come a little bit short of the end. All the way across, well, that's almost a straight line, and then short on the other side. Remember, the drywall is half an inch thick. So, if you're a quarter inch shy over here and a quarter inch shy over here, that makes it a lot easier to install. And the next sheet that goes up is going to come out past that point. All right, and it's gonna go in horizontal, but you're gonna have a nice solid joint there, so you don't have to worry about being perfect. Drywall is not finished carpentry, it's drywall. So you really wanna take advantage of the opportunities you have to cut these short spaces so that the install goes nice and simple. All right, so this becomes a half an inch shorter. So we're taking a quarter inch from each side. So you take half an inch off of that. Now, this is fractions, I know, it's math, right? This is gonna be crazy. Half an inch in eighths is actually four eighths. So you take that off, it leaves you three eighths. So we're gonna end up with 134 and three eighths. On the other side, we got 135 and a quarter. That ends up being 134 and three quarters. So because these numbers are different, we're gonna to wanna to put the mark at the top and the bottom and then connect the dots. Now, this is a really old house. And as a result, I'm not surprised that they're different. Now this is our new tool we're going to introduce, this the T-square for drywall. And if you put that point, it sits on the, on the drywall, right on my mark. Now I'm a good, I'm about a half an inch off down here. So there's options for cutting and you'll see in drywall videos, people will take their tape measure and they'll take their knife, they'll extend the blade a little bit and they'll basically hold the knife to the tape, okay, and then they can measure and they can cut. And you can set this up. If I wrote the door on the other side of the drywall, I'd be cutting on this end. And they, you can set this up where your finger is actually the guide. And then you just pinch the drywall at the measurement you want and you can cut a straight line with the knife, okay? And that works great when you're making square cuts. But in situations like this, you can't use the tape. You can't cheat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use our square and we're going to just move the bottom of that and to connect the dots, use our toe to hold it in position, draw a line with a pencil. The reason you want the pencil is when you're working like this, sometimes it's difficult to keep everything where you want it. So having a visual guide to make sure that you're still on track is a good thing. Okay, now we just press it against the drywall and we're lightly cutting the paper, okay? This is not an exercise of trying to cut all the way through the board. Now, very important to have a really sharp knife here. I recommend the Olfen knife. I'm not getting paid to say this. I've just been using them for years. It's adjustable, it's retractable, they have a snap-off blade, and you get a lot of life out of this. So this one blade is gonna do all the drywall in this whole room. Because what you're doing is you're cutting the paper. Remember, drywall is paper with all the compressed gypsum in between the two layers. As long as you can cut the paper, You'll break the board, no problem. Now, the way you break this after you put the score, is just, that's it, a little bit of a wiggle. All right, nothing to it. Now, if you fold the drywall back like this, you got control of it, it's not gonna fall over. Now, the reason we always have the white paper facing the front is it leaves a nice clean line. And when I break that drywall, the part that I'm looking at and that I'm working with with my mud is nice and clean. If I cut from the brown side, okay, and I break it, and something goes wrong, or my knife gets dull, I end up with a bunch of these kind of pieces of paper tearing off. Now when I go to finish my drywall, I can't tape that. I'd actually got to come by and tear every single piece of that off all the way down the edge, all right? So in order to avoid that, always have the white side out and cut that. Then you step back behind the drywall with your knife from the bottom to the top, and you're cutting through just paper. Now you're sticking your blade all the way through, but you're only cutting paper because the gypsum's out of the way. And then grab both sides so they don't fall over. <laughs> Set the garbage to the side, 
Here we go. Now it's ready for installation. All we have to do is assemble our drywall lift, throw it up in the ceiling. All right, so just before you put your drywall on the ceiling, you want to take one more look and you want to get measurements. So anything that you have to use a cutout tool after the fact. Now this is why I'm suggesting you use a cutout tool. Boxes like this, they're an issue. You have electrical fixtures, you have heat ducts, you can have fans, all kinds of different protrusions through the drywall when it's finished. Generally speaking, you want to cut those out with a cutout tool after you install the drywall, because if you try to measure exactly the location onto that drywall based on where it goes up, you're going to be really disappointed. Remember, we're leaving a little bit of gap on each side. The world isn't perfectly square, even if we think it is. The drywall is square. Your cutting might not be straight. There's so many variables that leaving all of the cutouts until after it's installed is your best bet. So what you want to do is you want to measure the center mark of this fixture center line and you want to write it on your plastic wall you can't drywall without a marker i'm telling you right now this is like the most important tool 58 inches okay so at around the 58 inch mark i'm going to put an arrow okay i'm going to put 58 and then i'm going to measure from the other side 45 and then i'm going to put this arrow 45 doesn't look like much, but as soon as I put this sheet up, I'm going to check my wall, okay? And I'm going to draw this and mark that spot on the drywall for a future cutout tool. Now, I think we'll show that on the video right away anyway, but the point is, your system should be check where your sheet's going, make sure any protrusions you've got labeled and marked, and then the next sheet over, you can always take a pencil and mark it on the drywall right where the, next to where the protrusion is, and you can just follow that system one sheet at a time, nice and methodical, don't be in a hurry and bury everything. That's generally how drywallers do it. They go so quick, they always miss something. Take it easy, make notes, think twice, double check. Now you can proceed. So here's our, our drywall lift. Um, these products are um, generally available at a lot of tool rental stores. You can just rent them for the day or just a few hours if that's all you need it for. Paragon Pro Manufacture Company is actually one that makes this. This is made in the USA, solid steel. It's an amazing tool. And if you haven't seen the other video where we discussed the difference between this and the cheap junk that's available on Amazon, I actually bought one just to check it out. And we did a video on the differences, pros and cons. You've really got to check that out. I'm just going to whip this together and start putting up the drywall while Matt goes out to buy our lunch. Just a quick note, before you go sticking your drywall on and closing your ceiling, make sure you've made a map of all of your electrical. <laughs> you need to know the exact center locations for after the fact so you can drill your holes for all your pot lights. Crucial. Now, let's just recap. We've got our drywall, we've got it cut, we've got it measured, we know it's square in the room. We're going about 44 inches off. The fixture we're going to cut out is written on the wall. So in reality, this drywall can go pretty much anywhere within a few inches, right? As long as it fits in the hole, it doesn't matter where it lands, we're going to be just fine. This is the benefit of my system. You don't have to be perfect in your location. You just want to get it roughly in the area. Keep an eye on things, try to keep them relatively square all right boom 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 now we were trying to go off this floor joist here or give or take about that spot now i know i'm less than 48 inches to the wall good we'll go a little bit tighter i've tucked all of my wires up so there's not going to be any problem there all right now i just want to make sure my gap here is straight and it's not and this is my key if the gap on each side of this drywall to my header is the same, I know I'm going in somewhat square. So I'm just gonna make a couple of modifications before I put too much tension on it. I like that. And then the last thing I gotta do is give it a little bit of tension, push it up there nice and tight. Now nothing's gonna go anywhere. I'm free to go get my tools and screw that on. So here's the thing, I just went out and I bought a new dimpler bit from DeWalt and it goes spring-loaded, does a great job. You throw in your screw and generally speaking, the idea is it sets the screw deep enough that it is recessed so it's not too proud so you can fill it with mud and it doesn't break the paper. And the way you can test that is you use a 5-in-1, just rub over top of it. There's no clicking sound. You hear that? If it clicks, it's not deep enough. So then you can adjust this just by turning the head. You can turn the head in and out and then you set the wheel behind it to snug it up, right? Anyway. I just wanted to show you that because that's a nice little tool and I picked that up so that 
you know, we'd have some options. But I also went out and picked up a new tool for Matty. He doesn't own a screw gun yet. And so this is a drywall screw gun. It's a very specific tool. It's generally only for drywall. And it has a adjustable neck as well. And so it's very quick. And so you can turn the motor on. The tip doesn't spin until you put pressure on it. All right. And then that's not deep enough, obviously. So then you adjust your head until you get what you want out of it. That's too deep. So I'm just going to play around here a little bit until I get the right depth setting. Nope. Still not deep enough, so I'm going to turn one more click. Oh, maybe. I'm liking that. It's just barely though, so I'm going to throw one more on there. There. Perfect. Now it's set in place. One little suggestion I have is, uh, Matt, actually, can you grab the electrical tape? Take a little bit of electrical tape and wrap it on the chuck now. Now that you have the depth set, there's no need to fine tune it. There's no situation the need for that will change. So I'm just gonna take care of that right now. Now I got that taped on. It's good to go forever and ever, ever, amen. And listen, uh, this particular tool is like only 80 bucks. And the way you hold it is it has like a pistol grip. So you're always pushing right up through the screws and you're not gonna slip off. And you just use the, your last couple fingers. That runs the trigger, nice and easy. Now it's corded, which means it's a good deal, all right, 80 bucks. Hello, if you're drywalling and you don't have power in the house, then you're probably in brand new construction. You might need to get a corded, cordless version, but that's like 300 or so. So I prefer to go with corded, especially for home renovations. This is a great tool upgrade for a homeowner because it's one of those things that if you have, you can make really quick work of this job and it's gonna be a perfect screw every time and you're not gonna be adjusting and fiddling around and breaking through paper and causing all those problems associated with just using a hand drill. Definitely won't buy one. If you wanna buy any of these tools, the lift, the drills, the little bits. You can go to our web page now. The link's in the description. We've got a brand new affiliates link there. So we got affiliates for all kinds of different companies. So feel free to do your shopping there. There should be some deals available. Everybody's got different prices on different things. So you can do some comparative shopping, but we just put together a little bit of a resource for you to help make your shop easier. Another quick tip. If you find a hardware store that sells screws in bulk, you just pay by the pound. It's half price when you go to the store and you buy them in these little plastic containers. Uh-huh, half price. The best part of using a screw gun in this situation is it's really super quick and you don't run the risk having any problems with puncturing the paper. So now for the next sheet. Um, you'll notice that when you screw the drywall in, now you have the strapping is marked with this drywall. Now across here, we need a mark. And this is again where this black marker comes in handy. Put a nice big black line under each one of these strapping on the plastic and you won't have any issues with knowing where to attach your drywall. So as long as you put a screw on this, each strap on this sheet and you mark with the marker on this side, you'll know all your locations for putting in the next sheet. So here we get into something a little bit more tricky because we're putting in a sheet that's going to get cut. It's not a full eight feet, four feet across. So when you're cutting your sheet down, you really want to be cutting where it's comfortable up here. It's a lot easier to cut here and break it and trim it than at the bottom, obviously. That means this is now going to be my factory edge on the ceiling. So last time we took the sheet and we basically lifted it up like this, right? And that would make this the cut side if we did that again. So now I've got to do this, I've got to flip it around. So you're going to get very confused. So this is where knowing where the door is and marking it on this is going to be very important. So this is going to be the door side where I'm going to be cutting off. Okay. So I'm going to put the cut side here. So now I got to visualize grabbing this sheet and going the other way. All right. That makes left, right and right, left. <laughs> very odd. So our measurement on where the, where the joint is, is 134 and 3 eighths. We're going to put that number down here now. Okay. The cut side, I wrote down 133 and 3 quarters. Okay. And just for safety's sake, this is my beam. Okay. So when we're picking it up, we're picking it up like this. And that beam 
goes over there behind us and that whole cut side will be on the outside. That actually makes sense. And the reason you have to be very careful here is because the cut line at each end are different measurements and it's so easy to get them reversed and then you cut the wrong angle so you end up with it doesn't fit on one side and it's a huge gap on the other side. The right side of the sheet I wrote down is 42 and 3 8 That's over there and that's at this end 42 and 3 8 from here. <laughs> and the other end is 42 and 3 quarters. Okay, so now we have all that figured out. So we're just going to draw that line on the angle again like we did last time. Now, here's the thing. Five and a quarter is how much we're cutting off on this side. And five and a half on the other side. Now it might seem like a small thing, but if we take our total amount, which is what, 140 something, Matt? 134? 65, around here. That's about the center of the board. If we make a mark here, five and a quarter, five and a half, the difference is five and three eighths. Okay. Then I can go like this. With the pencil, I can hold it on five and five and a quarter. And I can start drawing five and a quarter and slowly bring my pencil down to five and three eighths where it hits the middle. Right about here. And then slowly bring it down the marker to five and a half. Bam. So I've drawn a straight line that's actually on an angle over 11 feet. It's a great trick. If you can get good at that, now you can freehand cut this. Just trace it out with a knife. Bring your blade out about a half an inch. Remember, we're only cutting the paper. So you don't have to use a lot of pressure. You don't have to go deep. You just got to get that nice sharp blade in the paper. And then just set your hand your fingers up against the drywall and all you do is instead of looking at the blade look an inch in front of it and as long as you're looking at the at the pencil mark you'll find your blade will almost instinctively cut that mark within a millimeter or two it's not going to be an issue because remember we've already taken off about a quarter inch or so off that measurement to allow the wall board to cover the gap and you can do the same thing on this edge because this is on an angle. If you make the mark with your pencil, okay, all you got to do is get close. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you make a mistake, make it on the short side. It's easier to fill. Okay, we break that. A nice clean cut. Then we start down here. It gets really big. It's hard to manage. Now you can cut this from both sides. Just be cautious and be aware of where the blade is the whole time. Okay, go. About there-ish. How's that feel? Yeah, it's pretty balanced. I'm going to extend my arm here. Okay, one thing to remember is try to leave the handle and the wheel facing you when you're going tight to the wall. All right, there we go. I'm drive that up. Let it bounce around a little bit. Now, once we get close, now it's time to worry about that. We're up there. Nice. If you're not afraid of the noise, these awesome guns have got a little trigger set on here, so it leaves the motor on the whole time. And the only time the tip spins is when there's compression. So don't mind me. All right, so now we're going to talk about installing the walls. We're going to get three measurements here. The top, the middle, and the bottom. Because we're putting our sheets in horizontally, those are the three numbers that we're going to need. 134 and a half exactly. 134, what we'll go with, we'll reach up as high as I can go. 133 and a three quarters. Okay, and the bottom. Unbelievable. <laughs> I've always found it's best practice uh. 
all right, to get me all these measurements. We're going to treat that corner like it's a square. Actually, we're going to treat this one like it's square. Because this one is, that one actually slopes in. One of my tips for my system is using the plastic as a way to make notes, right? So I'm going to get Matt to just write down all the dimensions from this corner, which we're going to call square, because we put a level on it. And we'll measure right to left in these cases where we want the drywall to end, okay? We'll put the number here so that we can translate that information. We're going to go tight to the ceiling from a factory edge, so we can also measure from the ceiling down to the header, okay? Get me those two points as well. You do all of that, I'm going to start translating this information from the fold sheet and I'll cut the board. It's quite a work on this floor, eh? Okay, so this box here, it's, it's a live box, right? It's already in place. We, we're not going to use the cutout tool here because we've got a switch attached to it. Mm. Instead of disengaging the wiring and putting it all back together again, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two screws out, pull this out, twist it. We're going to pre-cut the hole on the drywall for this. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's not the greatest plan, but it's a good plan for the situation. Mm. Might as well show people how to do that. So we're going to get this measurement, exact measurements for these four corners off that wall and this wall. We're assuming that this is relatively square here, just because we put that stud in with the laser level. We should get pretty close. And I'm going to just take those measurements, I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger, and then we'll come and install that together. So what we're done here is we've measured the sheet to fit the whole wall. We've measured out where the, the framework ends around the door. Okay, so this all gets cut out. That represents the door. So there's the frame, there's the insulation, and then there's the actual frame in the wall. So you got door jam, insulation, wall frame. We're measuring to the edge of the wall frame so we don't have interruption with the foam. And then over here, we just marked out where the location of the plug is. And we're going to cut that in advance because it's a live plug and the switch is already attached. This is a system you can use at home if you're drywalling a space that's already finished. And the idea here is to cut all this and then, then install it so that it's one piece. We don't have joints around the door because joints around the door are the most likely place you're going to find cracks. Figure that. So if you can eliminate the risk of the crack, you solve the problem before it starts. And now this is an old tool. I've been using this for about 12 years now. Drywall saw the teeth on it. Every other tooth, they go in two different directions. So they actually cut the hole a little wider than the blade itself. Makes it really quick and easy to cut holes. Nice and simple, just a few bucks, but having a good hand tool on you, all the difference in the world, right? So Matt's gonna mark the ceiling where the studs intersect. Make sure you hit the middle of the stud. That was the outside of the mat. Huh? It's really important to get the middle of the stud. Knowing that where you start the pencil is going to be buried by the drywall. So if you do that hockey stick action, we're not going to know where it is. Now, because the door jam is already installed, we're going to cut this in advance of getting over there. All right. So we just put our level on the ground here just to create a lever because the, our ground is actually a little warped. So if I had this sitting on the ground and then I cut it out, it might snap the drywall in half because the floor is doing wonky things. Unreal. Now that drywall cutout tool is amazing. Uh, it's a noisy, it's dusty, but man is it efficient. And you can also use it for cutting around all your electrical boxes that don't have wiring yet. We'll show you that in just a minute. Let's get this in place. Nice and easy on this one, okay? Because of the door issue, you want to be more in the middle of that panel so that you've got a lot of control. Okay, you're over that. Okay, let me put my end up first, and then we'll close it like a door. How's that working? Okay, now you can see how crazy wonky this house is. This is how, how warped everything is, right? Um, how did you measure this? How did you cut it? I gave, I cut it the measurement that's written on the wall. Look at the gap. I'm two inches away from where I should be. Here's the evidence. This is the number that he gave me. Measuring from here across. So that's the number that I cut. The truth is, the stud is at 56 and a half. Because I need the drywall on the wood to attach it. 57. You're on the wrong... How am I going to screw to the wood if you cut it over here? Oh, you told me to measure the edge of the stud. Wrong edge! Oh. We're going to attach it to the wall, dude. Pointed it to the left. This is one of these moments where you just go... Moose Baba. <clears throat> ah, 
Okay, so <laughs> two things happen there. <laughs> One, there is a, apparently a breakdown in communication and we're going to blame me. That's fine. I get that. But two, the ceiling on this house is so out of whack. The floor is out of whack. There's nothing square to work with here. So in, a, in most homes, you don't deal with the 1880 pain. But here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the floor so that we at least have something to measure from. It's kind of the similar concept as the ceiling starting with the second sheet. We put it on the floor, throw it in the corner. That sits nice. So that can be treated like square. And then we're just going to come over here and we're going to mark where to cut the board so that we can screw it to the stud. And then, uh, <laughs> bam. So now I'm going to cut that line. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Even this. This is out almost an inch over four feet. Love it, God. Everything is here is so crooked. It's our job to make it look straight. All right. So all that information about measuring, that's all great information because generally we like to install tight against the ceiling. And that works great if your house is level. But in this case, everything is old and twisted and weird. So it's better for us to work here so we have a nice straight edge that we can measure off of. Because even once we put that sheet in there, we realized we were installing like this. And the same thing happened where things were too long or too short. It's just wacky. Off you go. You do this and I'll measure and cut the next piece. And then we'll be able to measure nice and snug up to the ceiling and all of our points across here. And we'll be able to basically trace out the contour of that ceiling. Unreal. So since I'm installing this drywall first, I'm just translating this information about where that box is. And it's eight inches over and 19 inches up. There we go. And that'll be fine. I'm also gonna need to just remove a little bit of work here for that box. Nice. With a little bit of luck, I'll be able to wiggle this in behind. <laughs> yes, sir. Once you get a couple of screws in, just stop. Get your cutting tool out. We know the middle of that location in the box. Now this particular tool, the tip of it is like a guide point and it doesn't have a cutting wheel on it. So it'll just run around the perimeter. What we do is we puncture the hole, we run to the edge, we hop over the other side of the box and then we keep pressure on the outside of that box until we've traced it out and it cuts through the drywall. Perfect, every time. Okay. okay. Woo! So, here's how we do this. Boom. That's close to the middle. Six feet. Right there. All right? In this situation, and I mean, if you could do this kind of drywall installation, whatever you face, you're going to be fine. If you have square and you have level, you have a lot of advantage. If you don't, and you're working in an old house like this, you've really got to use your noggin, and you've got to have a laser level. What I'm going to do, I've marked out six feet exactly on that drywall. Bam, there's my mark. Now here's the best part. There we go. There's my six foot mark right here, okay? Six feet. Now what I'm going to do, and I took my six foot mark on it, okay? There we go, all the way up and down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our measurements from the wall, from that line, measuring at the bottom of the drywall, which will be my finished edge, to the edge, to the corner, which is six feet, because we measured from there. So I know that's six feet. I'm going to take it from the top, measure to the outside corner. So now we're going to measure from our six foot mark over to the corner. All right, so it's 71 and a half. That's just a half inch less than six feet. So now I'm gonna translate that information over to this side. I know, I gotta take a half an inch off here to zero. And we're gonna just do this over and over and over again, measuring all of the elements on that wall, whoop, based on that center line, using the center line and the drywall as our level. This sounds kind of complicated, but the reality is if we have a horizontal line and we have a center line and we measure everything up and then off, 
we can find every point around the outside of that perimeter of that sheet of drywall, including cut out around the door. And we can cut all that out first and then just set it in place perfectly. What we want to do is create a multitude of points for taking measurements from. This one's just over four feet. Don't need a measurement. Just over four feet. That one's exactly four feet. And I'm okay if there's a little gap at the top of the sheet. I'm not concerned about it because we'll be able to fix that later. It's not ideal, but in this scenario, nothing is going to be ideal. Just under four feet. Okay, so far so good. We know the other sheet of drywall comes up a little bit. So over here we're down to four and a half, 47 and a half inches, 47 and a half inches. So the, the, the ceiling definitely drops here a little bit. So I'm taking a half an inch off the top over here because this whole side drops. Now that I've got a, a level edge, you can see how it, at the tape, it just it pops down there, right? Amazing, right? So we're following this, <laughs> drops right here. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut that drop in and we're gonna continue measuring off of this line at the bottom of the sheet to cut around the door and the plug. <sighs> Once we get that all done, then we'll be ready to install. So before you let the guy, you can let go now, take off, make sure you get a screw near the top. Otherwise, if somebody comes in the room and opens the door, the air pressure change will pull the drywall right off the wall. You might not be looking. <laughs> I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> now, if you're watching this video and you're wondering how in the heck is he going to fill all that crap? Look at these gaps. It looks pretty nasty, right? The reality is this is not a problem if you have the right tools and equipment and know-how. And that information is going to be in this next video. So click the link here to find out what we did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up if this helped you at all.